Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. As I continue with This is America, Charlie Brown, the Peanut Special Miniseries, I'm going to review Episode 6, which aired on March 10th, 1989 on CBS, called The Great Inventors. It's an episode where Charlie Brown, Linus, Pepper and Patty, along with Marcy and Sally, are, are giving the reports the school reports, you know, just like how Charlie Brown gave a school report on the previous episode called The Building of the Transcontinental Railroad, but this one's different, is where they talk about all the inventors such as Alexander Graham Bell, Thomas Edison, and Henry Ford and the Dewey Brothers. It stars Aaron Chase as Charlie Brown, Brittany Fortin as Sally Brown, Brendan Stewart as Linus Ben Pelt, Jason Mendelson as Pepper and Patty, Marie Cole as Marcy, Frank Welker as Alexander Graham Bell and Thomas Edison, Elisa Kane as Marion Edison, yeah, his daughter, Greg Berger as Thomas Watson and John Crusey. Julie Payne as Mrs. Holliday, and Bill Melendez as Snoopy and Woodstock. It's created by Charles M. Schultz, and it's produced and directed by Bill Melendez. The episode begins when Sally was given a school report with Snoopy as her assistant, hard to believe. She was mentioning all the less significant inventions that started between the late 1860s and early 1900s, such as pizza, comic strips, roller skates, drinking straws, and even ice cream sundaes. But Snoopy was going completely out of control that at the end of the report, Sally gave him back to Charlie Brown in his class, saying that she never want to work with him again. And that was the beginning of a slideshow presentation on the great inventors, starting with Linus' school report on a inventor named Alexander Graham Bell, the man who invented a telegraph with assistant John Crossy, or at this rate, John Watson, who would send sound waves from plucking an electrical pulse of wires and communication vibrates from a far distance between the receiving station all the way to the transmitting station. So that's where Bell actually heard the sound coming straight from the wires. And they did it. <laughs> that's how he created the telephone. But he also created the hydrofoil as well as the improvement of the telegraph. Bell, of course, had a deaf mother, which he also later married a deaf woman, and then as we all speak, he's a teacher for deaf children. There you go. <laughs> so, as a teacher, he was learning all the deaf children to speak in English language and syllables until he later employed a teacher by the name of Ann Sullivan to unlock the secret communication for a young student named Helen Keller. I know it's not mentioned in, in special, but I figured, why not? Because that's how it happened. But next was Pepper and Patty's uh, school report, with the help of Marcy at the end, on a vendor named Thomas Edison, which he was the man who, who invented the light bulb, as well as motion pictures, and electricity, which I know even Benjamin Franklin was uh, also invented electricity by testing it out on the kite. But, of course, that's already been shown on the birth of the Constitution right there. But you get the idea. Anyway, he also created a phonograph for voice recorders, such as the speech known as uh, Mary Had a Little Lamb, <laughs> uh, with his daughter Marion, which she was recorded in on her dowel. Yeah, which was a dowel that's, that has a man cutting on wood. That's what it looks like. And 
it vibrates too, and then later he recorded the same speech at his workshop, you know, where he's testing out the phonograph, and when he tried it out, it, it really works. But then Pepper and Patty was daydreaming about that, that Marcy suddenly continues with the report, where in October of 1879, Edison was working on many inventions, such as cameras, projectors, lights, Echelon storage battery, the carbon button transmitter for telephone speakers and microphones, and a whole lot more. And finally, Charlie Brown had gave his school report on an inventor named Henry Ford, along with the Duye brothers, who invented the first gasoline mileage automobile known simply as the Hortless Carriage. That's where we ride on four reels with an engine or electric without a horse to control a vehicle. So even on dusty, muddy, or even bumpy roads, the carriage can go all the way straight as you ride on within miles per hour. But on November of 1895, during Thanksgiving was the start of the first grand hortless carriage race in Chicago, Illinois that's being sponsored by a Chicago newspaper. Um, it might be Chicago Tribune or possibly Chicago Sun-Times, but it just never said. With a $500 grand prize, but because of a snowstorm, only six centuries of these cars made it to the starting line. Two electric cars and four gas engine cars. It even included a mystery car that somehow got part of the race, so it would have been seven instead. <laughs> yeah, but there was a moment where Snoopy was the one that's riding on his uh, <laughs> doghouse with the help of uh, Woodstock and, and, of course, Charlie Brown. <laughs> so the race had begun but only one winner turned out to be the Dorage you know the one that actually made it uh, through the finish line which I know uh, <laughs> he was beating uh, Lucy and yeah, Lucy was like given a mean face and, and all that well anyway after it won the race a year later, Ford would complete the Hortless Carriage, and then 12 years after that, he would create the Model T that would become very successful in world's transportation. Ford has a motor factory for building and mass producing over 2,000 cars with an assembly line and the chassis treated his workers well on an eight-hour work shift a day, improving rages and providing several benefits until the Great Depression had happened, leading into war, social reform, and others. But it also proves that freedom of America had created a climate for the great inventors to bring their magic to the test from time to time. Definitely a great episode on the great inventors who actually created all these inventions that we have now even in today's America because think about it I mean if we didn't have these though think how that's gonna go <laughs> yeah it would be pretty boring in fact I wouldn't even be recording this right now if you think about it <laughs> so for years to come that's how they invented all this stuff I mean, it's always interesting to see all the peanuts game, you know, joining in like, like they were news reporters to do interviews with the inventors themselves. So they had to work so hard to, to create them before it finally became a success in the shows. Yeah. And I, I really love those moments right there as we speak. Like, for example, you know, when, when Snoopy was going completely out of control with, with Sally's report, such as playing baseball and he hits the window, and then 
He also went out of control with the, the roller skates. <laughs> that was just hilarious right there. And then all of that. Or even the other moments too when when Snoopy was riding on the the doghouse, just like you know, just like how he rides it, but he was fighting the Red Baron you know, as the World One Flying Ace. But here he has a doghouse that's Horless Carriage, where he was riding with Charlie Brown and Woodstock everywhere he goes. Like he crashes into a sleigh, he crashes into a bus on the parade, and and he can even fly. <laughs> That was cool. Also, Lucy was on the hordeless carriage, you know, just making all these uh, strange expressions on her face, like she's happy, then then she's mad, and then she's you know, like she's snickering, like she's <laughs> and and she's even um, He's even uh, blowing raspberries on, on one of the drivers, so now you know how, how tough she's, she really is. But of course, the, the guy beat her to the game. Or when Pepper and Patty was daydreaming that uh, he was with Thomas Edison with his daughter, uh, Marion. Also to give you a note though, this was the first episode that actually had uh, the composer of David Benoist, yeah, because this will be the later composer for all the other Peanuts specials that follow, as well as the Peanuts movie. Yeah, and he's a great composer. Um, he would definitely be a dead ringer for Vince Guaraldi in shows, because he's very good at what he does. And I, I always love him, too. So this is the first episode that he ever did. And it now I can see why Charles and Shows really love him. <laughs> and so is Bill Melinda's. <laughs> um, but it really is a great special. It just really shows that, that these inventors right there can work this hard and time to create all these inventions for everyone, to, for all the customers. And, and consumers to enjoy. Yeah, and it really shows. So it's really good. So, highly recommend this episode, and I really, really love it. Well, that's my episode review on The Great Inventors. Stay tuned for episode 7, which is called The Smithsonian and the Presidency. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.